Oh, let's see. Hey, you're listening to Dear Handy, the number one Shadowrunner advice broadcast on The Matrix. My name's Handy, and if you want advice from a Shadowrunner to Shadowrunners, you are in the right place. You know, normally I'm flying solo here on Dear Handy and answering questions from you guys, but I've got a very special guest with me today, hailing all the way from Columbia, South Carolina, the Confederated American States. He was a former, uh, you know, Shadowrunner here in Seattle, and uh, his name is Payday, the drone extraordinaire. Payday, hello. Basically, I'll do anything for money. Just about anything, anyway. <laughs> Won't we all, though, Payday? I mean, that's 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 what it's about. You got to make a living somehow, eh, you know. How's, you got to, you got to. There's no shame in trying to feed your family, you know. That's that's what I always say. <laughs> <sighs> this is like a bad practical joke. Who got me involved in this? Um, well, my people talk to your people, whoever they are, and we hooked up. And uh, we're here now to answer questions from people who wrote in questions from live callers. So remember, if you want to call over to the Dear Handy Show, give us a call over the matrix, over the over the airwaves, over the grid. You know, however you get yourselves over here and uh, get into that call waiting room and we'll pull you in and see if we can get some questions for you. I think to warm us up, we're going to get one um, question that was sent in to us ahead of time. And it says, Dear Handy, hello. Uh, hi, long-time listener, first-time question writer. My wife just got pregnant, and we are thinking about a move for the family. What, in your worldly experience, would you recommend as a place to move and settle down? From Restless in Seattle. What do you think, Payday? How, you, 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 trying to settle down and, and, cre- and, and have a family? What do you think, uh, what should this person do? Don't move to Colombia. That's my first, my very first advice to you. Do not move to Colombia. Good barbecue, crappy people. Everyone's stupid. It, it's unbelievable. Whoa. If I was you, stay in Seattle. Just stay there. Even with the thrill gangs and the go gangers and all the all the violence out in Seattle, you're still saying stay in Seattle, eh? Columbia is that bad. You don't want them anywhere near starting a family, right? What is so bad about Columbia, Payday? Ah, oh, well, let me just let me just start. Okay, it's first off the Humanists. They bother you when you're eating barbecue. They bother you when you're walking down the street in a parking lot. Um. They abduct your friend's family and throw them in prison. I mean, the Humanists, that's enough. But isn't Humanists all over the place? Are they just particularly bad in Colombia? They are they are particularly bad in Colombia. They have everybody brainwashed. There's, I, I saw them make orcs into dogs. <laughs> but you know what? Is a dog's life really all that bad? I hate you. <laughs> and I do to you too, I guess. If that's the polite thing to say. You know what I'm going to say to Mr. Restless in Seattle? A great place to settle down. Lovely ski slopes. Nice altitude. Wonderful weather all year round. It's nice and temperate and moderate in the the summertime. Really cool, beautiful snowfall in the wintertime is Denver. Denver is a great place to settle down and raise a family. You've got um, all sorts of things. You've got Colorado Springs nearby. You've got uh, not too far to the other direction. You can go hit up Vegas. I mean, come on. And a giant dragon that's going to rule over every part of your life. What's wrong with you? But when in the world today are you not always under the oppressive thumb of a dragon? I mean, really? (sighs) Hopefully most days. (laughs) <laughs> do we have any more questions? Yes, of course we do. I think we've got a caller, and I'm going to pull him in now. His name is uh, Jim. Jim, are you on the line? I am. How you doing there, Andy? I'm doing great, Jim. How is it going? Why don't you tell us where you're from, Jim? All right. So I'm actually uh, born and raised in Seattle. Uh, <laughs> a Seattle native. I love to hear it. You love the. Are you a big fan of the Emerald City like I am? 
I am, I am, and that's actually why I'm calling. I kind of need some advice. Well, that's what we're here to do, Jim, is to give advice, so hit us. I can't uh, wait so to I'm give you some advice. I'm out in a stuffer shack bathroom. I'm not sure exactly who I, uh, you know, someone, someone's out there that they're trying to get in here. And um, <laughs> I'm trying to think of if I can go through a vent or maybe if I should just uh, have a buddy of mine summon a fire spirit and just burn the entire place down. I'm not sure. So are you telling me that right now you are in the bathroom that you're trying to get out of? Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, there was a closet. I already got out of that, but now I'm still in the bathroom. Okay, well, first thing I would recommend is make sure that you're whispering a little more. They're probably going to find you. But um, other than that, I think we will answer your question off the air. Hopefully, we can give you some advice, and uh, good luck. Um, hopefully, we can help you out. Um, Jim is stuck in the bathroom, and there's some potentially nefarious people. I say, uh, Payday, I don't know about you, but I say uh, diplomacy is always the right way to go. You know, we need to talk to each other. It's a problem with society nowadays. We need to, we need to step out and uh, be more brave with the way that we communicate with each other. So step out of that bathroom stall. Just, you know, open arms and welcome each other as brothers and say, let's, let's be friends. Let's all, let's all just get along. What do you think about that, Payday? No. You step out of the bathroom right now. Best case scenario, you're, you're a man for the first time in your life. Worst case scenario, you're dead and you're out of my... I never have to hear from you again. It, it, I'm wondering... I'm waiting for the advice in there, Payday. <laughs> there is advice. I said step out. Confront your... Oh, so you're on my side. Confront si this guy. So, so no open arms, but uh, a more aggressive approach is what you're saying. You know, fight fire with fire, so to speak. Right. And if you happen to be a rigger, you can always drive your car through the window and hit the fragger. That's If all you're not, and you're unfortunate not to have any skills, basically, I don't know, flop around like a dead fish. Now, you remember Jim uh, suggested, you know, he was asking about uh, the the event elation system or something to make an escape. Uh, I don't think that's a terrible idea, but here's the problem with stuff like that. Uh, you know, you're going to end up messing up your suit and get dirty, and then what's going to happen afterwards when you get out of there? Uh, are you going to be are you going to be in a situation where you can head to the dry cleaners? I don't know. Uh, you know, and then that costs you some extra money. I'm I'm still on board with the confrontation. I say take the more uh, you know brotherly approach but our friend payday here says step up you know confront your fears and uh you know maybe there's some fairness in that too and besides you're in a stuffer shack there's stuff there gets stains like blood out inside the stuffer shack so if you you know if you come out on top you can worry about your suit or your clothes or whatever later fair enough and you will come out on top i mean let's stay optimistic here right payday yeah yeah that's what i'm i'm optimistic for him yeah, let's, uh, let's take another write-in call that we've got um, before we take another live caller. Remember, you can come on into the call waiting line. We'll, we'll get you in here. We love to talk to our listeners, and we love to take questions. Live call and show long, here. How long am I on the hook for this? Uh, you're on for as long as uh, uh, the contract that we worked out, I think, was for another hour and a half payday. So uh, uh, buckle in. We're going to have Great. some fun here. Great, I'll buckle in. Next question. Next question is, Dear Handy, I've got a problem and hopefully you can help. I've always been good with people in my less than legal endeavors. I've always been tasked with being a face man. However, lately I've been dealing with some problems with halitosis. This has made my job very difficult as whenever I'm trying to talk to a mark, they're distracted by bad breath and, I just, and they just want to avoid me. What should I do? Payday? Never heard of Tic Tacs. Put some of that in your ass-smelling breath. <laughs> you know, always straight to the point, Payday. That's what I love about you. That's what I heard about you. Is that you're uh, you don't beat around the bush. You go right to the root of the problem. And uh, I, th I think I think that some people need to hear that. You got a stupid person, a permanent solution for him. Something he can try. Well. Uh, one thing that is always good is to, um, 
is to is to mask the uh, the the smell or maybe lean into it a little bit. Uh, maybe you shouldn't be the face anymore. Maybe you should be uh, using this to your advantage and distracting your Johnson and and using that as a, sort of a negotiation tactic. So, so so presumably he wants to get out of there, but you got to hold him there and you got to hold him down and say uh, this is a negotiation time, right? Well, if you want to go, then we need to finish these negotiations. Get in close. Give him some of that breath and uh, make sure that uh, make sure that you're being the close talker. And uh, and and he's probably going to be you know a little bit more lenient towards uh, negotiating and everything because people want to get out of uncomfortable situations and they don't want to hurt your feelings in the process. Right. I did that actually one day to Elric. He was. I'll get it under my skin, thinking he was fixing trucks. I don't know what he thinks he's doing half the time. He's he's an artist. I don't know. <laughs> so well, so he he's, he's in my way. So I so I ate some really really heavy garlic stuff, and I just kept lording over him, telling him what he should do. I don't know if it was my personality, my charming personality, or if it was the garlic. But I got rid of him for a little while. Yeah. Another thing that you could consider is that maybe. Uh, maybe you're actually being told a little bit of a fib from your Johnson. Is it, is it the Johnson that's actually the one complaining? If that's the case, maybe they're trying to get the upper hand on you. You need to do a smell test if you haven't. Always do the in-the-hand smell test. Breathe. <sighs> Make sure that it's true, okay? First of all, get all the information, all the facts. Um, the more facts you have when you enter into a negotiation with the Johnson, the better position you're going to be in. And, um... Maybe you'll learn something that you uh, didn't realize that that uh, this is this is all just made up, and he's trying to get the upper hand. Remember, the Johnson is not your friend, unless he's trying to be your. Sometimes that happens, but uh, let's take another caller uh, payday. Let's see let's see what we can do. We've got on the line with us is Kline K, K line Kline Clean A. <laughs> you Clean A. You think his name's Clean A? Right. <laughs> anyway, uh, so I have a question. Uh, while we were talking about the Stuffer Shack stuff, I recently went to the Redmond Barons, and uh, I don't know what was up with this. Uh, he, this guy was behind the counter. I don't know what he was practicing, but uh, it was weird, and the bathroom was not clean at all. So uh, uh, what do you all think about uh, cleanliness with uh, Stuffer Shack? and uh, their hiring practices. Oh, excellent question. I will we'll go ahead and answer that for you. Um, so the question, of course, is what is it, what do you, what, what do we think about cleanliness and stuff for shacks? And in particular, what do, what do we think should be done about that and what, what can our listeners do about that? You, you go to stuff for shacks a lot, Payday? I go to stuff for shacks a lot. Look, when you're on BTLs all the time and you're enjoying life, well, somebody else's life, you need food now, lots of times. So you go to the stuffer shack. All right. Have you? Have you? Do you have much experience with the bathrooms? You don't go to the bathroom in a stuffer shack. They hire the most unmotivated dreckheads. They don't clean the washrooms ever, and the burritos, the the damn stuffer shack burritos. <laughs> so, uh, so, uh, so, you're saying is that you're using the bathroom in a stuff for check is a mistake that you've, you've already made a mistake if you're there. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you made a mistake if you would start going to the washroom. Go out back. That's my advice. Just go out back if you need to. Yeah. I'm, you're asking the wrong guy. I'm not exactly... I don't give a dreck about cleanliness most of the time. It's a waste of time. Wear the same clothes for a week in a row. Who are you trying to impress anyway? Right. Now, sometimes... Nature does call, and you have to take care of that. And sometimes the back alley happens to be filled with some other people who are maybe living there or or are uh, using it for, like, ritual magic or something like that. So sometimes, sometimes you're forced to use the bathroom. Now, it's a lot of the problems I see in places like Stuffer Shacks or like Kong Walmarts where you feel like you got these employees that just don't care, um, which I'm sure they do, but... Maybe there's a lack of motivation in the workplace. So you've got to, if if the employers and if management are not going to provide that motivation for them, 
I think sometimes customers need to find a way to provide that motivation themselves. So there's a couple different ways that you could go about doing this, right? You could um, maybe make a mess in the bathroom yourself, fabricate something, construct something that is a little bit too difficult to ignore. Um, like a prank? Well, you know, it, it could be, or, or, you know, you could uh, take some uh, fish guts and put them on the floor. You know, something that's going to, you know, do it in a semi-regular, uh, non, uh, semi-non-regular interval, maybe, at a particular uh, stuffer shack that you have a particular problem with. If it's unpredictable, then they're going to feel like, hey, we need to make a, it a regular habit of checking out these bathrooms. Uh, so that so that we can take care of these problems when they pop up as quickly as as they pop up, um, it's all about motivation, right? There you go. Apparently, this guy says go throw fish in the washroom. Well, that's it, it that's doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't have to be fish. I mean, it could be anything. Uh, set off, uh, you know, one of those uh, like. I don't know, uh, party grin, stringy, party ch strings things in the bathroom. You know, it, it could be easy to clean up, but something that can't be ignored. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Well, um, let's see. We're gonna we're, we're still waiting on taking some more callers in the call waiting room. So if you want to take a call, if you want to if you want to ask us a question, jump on in there, and uh, and uh, yeah, we, uh, we you know will. I'm starting to like this guy, this handy guy. He's stupid and pretty irritating, but. <laughs> I get people telling me that joke all the time, Payday. It is funny, and I like to, uh, uh, I, I enjoy it. Um, we all have a, our part to play in the world. Isn't that right? Yeah, yeah. And your part, of, apparently, right now, at least for the next, what, hour or two, is irritating me. <laughs> I don't try to irritate. Um, sometimes people just, you know... It, it, things happen. So we've got another one here. Dear Handy, I come from a large family. We grew up on the streets, often had to make do with what we had. Some hand-me-downs have always been important in our family. One particular hand-me-down has been elevated to near family heirloom status over the years. My great-grandfather passed on a Glock 22 pistol that he used when he was in law enforcement in the old U.S. of A. It's been handed down and used by each generation. It's come to my turn to pass it on. But my son is a dirty pacifist and he doesn't like guns. I don't want the gun to sit in a box in the attic unused. I want to keep it in the family. I want to give it to someone who will use it and care for it and then pass it on themselves. My niece is an aspiring Shadowrunner, but I have the fear that it'll end up leaving the family or being sold or something like that. So my question for you, Handy, is, is it okay to put stipulations on something you're passing on to someone? Uh, and that is from Unsure in S Chicago. What do you think, Payday? No. No. Now, your only choice at this point is to have another kid, raise it right, give it the gun, tr you know, train it to make money. You should be having kids making money for you. If your kids aren't growing into Shadowrunners that can pay your way, you're doing it wrong. That's a, that's an interesting perspective. I, I like the uh, time honored nature of it. You know, like this this is an old view of the old world where we're back in the times when when people going back to the classic era when people had children in order to support the family to support themselves and uh, and I like this uh, homage this throwback to uh, an older an older time. You you seem to be a payday someone who who's old and and classic at heart. Is that right? Did you just call me old and classic? Uh, you know, if the shoe fits. As as if I'm like ancient, like an old man. Uh, maybe. I wish that whoever raised you, I wish they could go back in time and do it right, just like this guy, this pacifist kid. <laughs> well, you know, everybody to each their own. So I like that idea. Raise somebody to, uh, to, you know, have ch more children. We need more children in the world. You know, we, we need more uh, youth. The, the children are our future. 
Um, but I've got a different approach. Um, if you're not, if you're not maybe in, into having more children, and that's not the direction you want to go, as valid a choice as that is, perhaps instead of putting stipulations on the thing that you hand over, because that is a little weird, right? You're giving a gift. You can't expect them to want uh, to accept this, these, this baggage that you allow to it. You have to, you have to expect that they're going to do with it what they want, and that might be selling it or giving it away to someone who's not in the family or something like that. So you got to protect yourself. And what I suggest is you find your local, a friendly magician or a local somebody who can put some like, uh, like ritual magic on it. Maybe some, um, some sort of spells that, that can make sure that you're tracking it. Maybe even some, uh, really hard to find, uh, matrix tracking tags or something so that you can surreptitiously sort of follow it and make sure that these sorts of things aren't happening. That way, when and if it does happen, you will know about it. You'll be able to take care of it. I, uh, something just occurred to me. Maybe your kid isn't a pacifist at all. Maybe he just doesn't want your junk he got. <laughs> it's fair enough. You know, sometimes uh, having those conversations with, uh, especially family members who you care about and don't want to hurt their feelings, sometimes having those conversations is difficult and you come up with different sort of invented reasons, right? Invented reasons why you, you uh, don't want to take this thing from another person and you know oh I, dad I, I don't want the old gun i know it's a family heirloom but what am i going to do with it i'm a pacifist right check into your son right yeah and besides like maybe you handed him this piece of crap gun loaded with regular ammo if you're gonna give somebody a weapon give them the gift of armor piercing rounds Ah, that is some excellent advice. Also, maybe you want to, going along with Payday here, maybe you want to check into your son. Check up on that pacifist thing. Hire somebody to follow him around. Make sure that that's all true, because if it is, then uh, then then you go the other route. If it's not, uh, then, then you need to sit down and have a talk about honesty in the family, okay? There's so. nothing wrong with killing people. No truer words have been said, especially in our business in shadow running. So, um, I think we've got a caller on in the call waiting room. It looks like we've got a, a Kit on the line. Kit, can you hear me? Are you're on the Dear Handy show? It looks like uh, Kit. Kit, we can't hear you. Do you have your uh, your microphone on mute? Can you hear me now? I've got you, Kit. Here you are. Welcome to the Dear Handy show. Where are you from? around oh fair enough i like the mysterious nature of things you got a question for me and payday yeah uh well um can you is this like being recorded or something can you like scrub my name off of there i was supposed to change it it was supposed to be like anonymous um well i'll see what i can do i've got uh, my producer over there in the booth hey uh see see what you could do about that um dealing with uh you know maybe taking the line and yeah Thank you. We're, we're going to do what we can. Um, well, I almost said your name again. Um, yeah. You got a question for us? Yeah. Um, okay. So, yeah, you take care of that name, Drek. Anyway, um, so I've got a friend who's like, uh, he's, he's changing. Um, let's call it like Surge, right? And he's got uh, like people interested in like snatching him and like, I don't know, selling him parts or something. Anyway. He's been, like, acting out. He, like, shot a team member with a capsule round of lace the other day when, like, someone else let his, uh, you know, condition slip. And he, like, used to be really careful about this stuff. But lately, he's been, like, messing around with weird artifacts on the job and stuff. It's only attracting the dudes he's trying to steer clear of. I don't know how to make this guy, like, you know, properly paranoid again. All right, that is an excellent question. So you said that they're infected? Did I hear that right? No, I, uh, I'm not going to get into it, but he's like, there's something changing about him. Something you know, changing. You know, we've been talking a lot about CFD in the world lately, and then the infected going crazy. Maybe my mind just went straight to that, but uh, but they're changing in some way, and it's causing them to act out and attract the attention, exactly the type of attention that they're trying to avoid. Is that the gist of your question? Yeah, but it's not, he's not a head case. 
I, I understand exactly. And uh, so, so yeah, maybe we have some advice for you. Thank you for calling, Kit. Um, and uh, and we're gonna answer. Stop saying my friggin' name, man. Oh, yeah, right. Um, uh, How wait. stupid are you? Take the timestamp on that one, and uh, we'll we'll yeah okay. Yeah, well we'll uh, we'll try to answer your question off the air. Thank you for calling. Right. Bye. Um, so what do you think, Payday? We've got uh, we've got someone who's 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 got a hard conversation that they want to have with a friend of theirs who's who's trying to maybe avoid a certain image that they have, uh, stop attracting unwanted attention, but in through their actions, they're doing exactly the opposite of what they're trying to accomplish. This is like a time honored. This is like a a, a, a tale as old as time, right? Yeah. All right. So for one, your voice sounds very familiar. And two, maybe some paranoia is good in his life. Why don't you try selling him? I mean, if he's changing or whatever, uh, just as long as it's not like a mental change, why don't you just try selling him? Just sell him. So and maybe rescue him right at the last minute and you can be a hero and he'll fear for his life. Maybe yes. just hire our shadow runners out to go after him. You know, that's something, that's a piece of advice that I often give people in other parts of, you know, in other types of questions and other solutions. We as shadow runners, or me as a former shadow runner, you as a shadow runner yourselves, we, we do services to shadow runners. We're always looking to help employ each other, right? So providing solutions that create jobs, that's what it's all about, right? So I think that you can kill two birds with one stone. Uh, you can you can you know help provide employment opportunities for people and also help uh, teach this teach this uh, friend of yours a hard learned lesson you know that that hey maybe the way that you're going about doing things is a little ostentatious maybe that um, have the talk with them first because it's it, you know dramatically you kind of gotta say hey you might want to cool it down because you might attract the wrong kind of attention. You know what I'm saying? And then when they tell you, no, it's fine, whatever, then uh, you you hire the Shadowrunners. They come in and they, you know, rough them up a little bit, maybe shoot them in the leg or give them some kind of a, a scare a little bit. And then you come in and save them. You're, you're doing another thing, right? You're reinforcing that you are the good person. You're the good friend who's come in and saved them. Maybe they need to listen to you a little bit more next time and try to avoid the thing that just happened that you said was going to happen. On the other hand, if he's really just pissing you off, you can always just stick him with a little bit of narcoject or something like that while you're driving down the highway and just push him out of the car. Like what I would do to throwback, for example, if I was driving with him right now. Right. So just tough love. Sometimes that's what it takes, right? It's just tough love. Oh, you're you're a you're a romantic at heart, payday. I I, I, I am I, a fountain I, of wisdom. I truly believe that. Um, thank thank you for calling. Uh, I, I I'm not gonna say your name again. Um, we're we're getting my producer to work on that. It's gonna scrub the signal, you know, whatever. Um, let's uh let's go with another caller here. Uh, dear Handy, um, my girlfriend asked me to babysit her corgi. Unfortunately, when I was out on a night errant raid, when I was out on a run, night errant raided my squat and confiscated the dog. I have no idea where they took it. I panicked, and so I ordered a lookalike off of the Matrix Pet dealership. They delivered the lookalike dog 10 minutes ago. Wow, this is really timely, isn't it? Um, this person really uh, could use our advice, probably. 10 minutes ago, they just delivered it, but it's not a dog, it's a devil rat. My girlfriend's coming to pick up the little, the little D in an hour. What do I do? And it's signed, Eric DeMage. This huh. is, this, he's, he's in quite a little pickle, isn't he? No, he got an upgrade. A corgi? Are you kidding me? Well, corgis are cute little animals, don't you think? Devil rats can protect your house. You just throw a, a nest of devil rats in you know, like your garden or whatever, if you're fortunate enough to have a garden or whatever in a box by your front door, and you just wait. Even just like wait, and you can film it as like people push their way into your squat, and then a bunch of devil rats spring out at them. 
So, so what do you, but, but the, still the essential problem is that the girlfriend is looking for the corgi. So how do we deal with that problem? I understand what you're saying. I understand that you're saying oh. you really need the devil rat more than you need the corgi, but maybe right. the girlfriend doesn't see it that way. Well, maybe the girlfriend can, you know, just go on knowing that a bit of her corgi lives still within the devil rat. What I'm saying is that the devil rat ate the corgi. I see what you're saying. Okay. Um, uh, that might be a hard sell, but... Uh, it's a hard lesson. It's a hard life. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's you know, one of those things, if, if uh, you know, true love finds a way in situations like this, you got to give them the hard lesson. And if it's coming from a place of love, you really were... Eric Demage, you were really trying to do the right thing. And I believe that. You were trying to do no, the right barely thing. barely trying. You were trying, he did, I mean, I guess from your perspective, he did order a corgi, so he should have just went ahead and ordered the devil rat, I guess is what you're thinking. Well, it, it, no, that's not what I'm thinking. Don't ever pretend to know what I'm thinking. <laughs> what, what, what I'm saying is that, like, if you have asked it in the first place, you ordered this corgi and somehow got a devil rat, that doesn't seem like a mistake that just happens in transit. That's not a logistical mistake. You're an idiot that ordered a devil rat by mistake. Own it, give her the devil rat, and if she takes it badly, just hope that the devil rat eats her. On the other hand, maybe you're in a tenuous relationship to begin with, and you're trying to save it, right? Well, in this case, things are uh, iffy, and you're probably going to want to hide this problem. So here's what I suggest. I suggest you find um, your Shadowrunner. You've probably dealt with uh, mages in your life. You need to find one with a shape change spell, okay? Shape change that that puppy quite, you know, oppositely, literally. Shape change it back into a puppy and uh, into the corgi. And just uh, get some masking put on that and uh, some deal with it. Quicken the spell, all that kind of jazz. And uh, buy yourself some time. Now, what you're going to want to do is make sure that you, uh, you uh, hopefully... You've got a yard with the corgi and maybe get some of the, you know, maybe some of the leavings of the corgi is still around. Get some genetic information. Take that to a local genetics uh, cloning facility and, and the shape change spell has bought you some time. Get yourself a genetic copy of that old corgi. It's going to cost you a little new yen, but, you know, is it, isn't it worth it for love? Keep the devil rat. Ditch the girlfriend. Well, I guess we're just going to have to agree to disagree, Payday. Um, I'm going to take another uh, 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 piece of mail and stuff. Remember, guys, call in to the call waiting line. We're taking live calls today and not just answering your mail. Um, we'll, we'll keep taking questions until we run out, and that includes your calls. So uh, let's see. Um, how about... This one here. Dear Handy, sometimes when I come home from a meeting with my fixer, I have migraine headaches and nosebleeds. I'm confused because I've never had them before. Uh, if they, the, uh, they only seem to pop up when I meet with him, I worry that I might, it might be his cologne or something that I'm allergic to. It. I don't want to stop doing business with him, though. He always seems to have a job for me or some great piece of gear that he thinks I should buy, and it must be good stuff because I never seem to be able to say no to him. How should I talk to him, and what should I do? From Headache in Harlem. <laughs> Everything is absolutely fun. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you're enjoying this, uh, Payday. Do you have some advice for the person who's who's obviously dealing with a rough situation? It's definitely not mind magic. If you may have been thinking that in any way, it definitely is not mind magic happening there. I'm sure that it's the cologne. Um, what you need to do is just now, from now on, when you're meeting with him, wear like a bandana. Especially if you're meeting with him in a public place, wear a bandana, and just so that he knows that you're business, make sure that you walk into the public place with the bandana in front of your face and have a gun in your hand. The gun. What That's purpose does the gun serve? To just so that he knows that you mean business. So you just walk into that public place with a bandana on your face and a gun in your hand. Right. And 
That's a great you idea. Good. You know, that image with the bandana over your face and the gun in your hand, the bandana says, I'm uh, conscientious about my surroundings. Maybe uh, maybe I'm sick, and I don't want to get other people uh, sick as well. Uh, maybe... Um, you know, I'm just I'm just worried about catching infections. You know, it's a, it's a common thing nowadays to do exactly that. The gun in your hand? Well, that's self-defense. That's just a common sense, right? I mean, people people nowadays, uh, you could have a concealed carry license. Who knows? Um, I don't think that'll be a problem at all. I kind of like your approach that you're taking here. Yeah, and even tell them to uh, stop wearing the cologne or else. Right. Make sure that you yell or else in that public place. With the gun and the bandana on your face, it's an important part of it. Yeah, it it kind of sells the whole uh, the whole deal with with being conscientious and and caring about the other people around you, right? Don't you think? Yeah, yeah, I really, I really do think. I think a lot more than you, like a lot. Um, you know what? I'm glad that you do because we need more thinkers in the world, payday. And uh, and and people like who who spend more time thinking about the world around them, who are more conscientious. Exactly what I'm talking about. Um, that's that's only going to make the world a better place. I think we've got um. Remember our friend Jim who was stuck in the bathroom. I think we've got a call back from him, and I'm going to pull him in. Jim, can you hear me? Uh, you you're calling back. Do you have? Is everything okay? Uh, yeah, Andy, I just, uh, wanted, so I, I tried your advice. I tried to walk out and, you know, greet everyone with open arms and one thing kind of led to another. And I'm wondering if, uh, if either you or Payday has some, uh, good advice on how to get blood out of a custom suit. Um, ah, see? Exactly. I think, uh, that's a great question, Jim. Um, we're going to answer, answer that. And, uh, I bet you Payday has some great advice because he kind of anticipated this. Um, thank you for calling in. And, uh, if you need some more advice later, then, uh, definitely make sure to call back. Um, Payday. So, so this is exactly what you were saying might happen. He went out open arms, you know, like I said, um, one thing leads to another, uh, things go maybe the right way, maybe the wrong way. Either way, he's ended up in this situation where he's got to deal with bloodstains, something that Shadowrunners are all familiar with. Do you have some advice in your experience, your, your, your long experience as a Shadowrunner dealing with bloodstains? There we go again. The old jokes. Ah, I next know. will, next will be short jokes. <laughs> are you short? <sighs> All right, so you do what I do. This is my advice. So when my teammates whine about blood on me or uh, dirty grease or anything like that, you get a good jacket, a really good jacket that basically you never take off. You just put it over your dirty clothes and you'll look fantastic. You go everywhere with this jacket, even when it's 40 degrees out, whatever, just might be melting your bones off. Just never take off the jacket. The sweating, sweating will make you a man. Don't worry about getting the stain out. Is basically what I'm saying. <laughs> you know, character. It adds character. Is kind of kind of where you're going with that. You know, if you go with, with enough different kind of blood splatters, uh, different uh, patterns and everything, and also different types of creatures. Just keep wearing the same jacket in different situations. You might have different colors as well. Create sort of a bloody tie-dye pattern. Um, I think I think you could have some really interesting conversation piece clothing. I'm yeah. going to take your silence as uh, that you agree with me. Um, well, that, you basically just copied what I said. So, yeah, of course I agree with you. Well, you know, that's, that's, well, that's, that's, uh, let's take another call, exactly. Uh, n not a call, but we got another calling question from uh, Ralvin, Ral, Ralvin, Ralwin, um, says, Dear Handy and Payday, uh, I guess uh, he's listening in, maybe sent this in real uh, recently. You seem like smart people. Hey, thank you, pal. I appreciate that. Um, you seem like small, p smart people. If one wanted, as a Decker, to get some formal education within Seattle, where would you go? You used to live in Seattle, Payday. Um, now you. No, I didn't. That's uh, maybe maybe my producers have that wrong. Did you guys? Yes, they do. Make sure to check that information. They they really insist that you used to be in Seattle. They're wrong and whatever. Um. 
I know a thing or two about Seattle. You want to go for education? That was the question. Education in Seattle? Yeah, some people want to do some continued education, maybe uh, make themselves more uh, marketable employees. Redmond, Poyello, either of those places. Great for education. Street education is what you need. You don't need fancy book learning or, or anything like that. I am the smartest person I know, and I never went to school. I Oh, and then you can also cybernetic implants, uh, BioWare. Get that put in your head, make you smarter, get things firing on, on all cylinders. Um, drugs, uh, BTLs. BTLs make you so smart. Yeah, I was kind of going in a similar street direction. It's kind of been the type of advice that I give to people, um, specifically for a Decker. You know, you might think that you need a formal education, right? It seems complicated to be a Decker. Coding, programming, hacking, all that kind of stuff. Um, maybe you feel like you have to have that like computer science background. But you know what? When you're in the shadows and you're uh, trying to get a job, Mr. Johnson's not going to ask for your to see your diploma. Mr. Johnson's not going to ask to see, you know, your resume. Well, you know, in so much as your street cred, maybe if that counts as a resume. But here's what you do. Go out, get some street uh, experience, like Payday's saying. Now, I specifically suggest heading out to, uh, oh, I don't know, uh, a local loan st or a local night errant uh, precinct office. Uh, maybe get yourself, uh, you're, you're going to want to get in, and you're, from what I understand from Deckers, you're going to want to get in and maybe get into a situation where you can plug in to some si sort of piece of equipment. So it couldn't hurt to maybe like uh, be at the scene of a crime, maybe get brought in for questioning, or maybe commit a crime yourself. Of course, petty crime, misdemeanor, so you're not going to have long-term consequences, but you're going to be in the precinct and get some experience on a semi-difficult host situation, you know, poke and prod at it and get some street uh, education, some 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 street learning under your belt. That's the best thing that you can really do. Well, I was going to, I had some more advice, but I don't know what it was going to be. What I do know is that no one cares at all about fancy book learning. Elric, for example, tons of book learning. And all that schools taught him apparently was that ghouls are people. I found that was ho that was hilarious. So, throw that out the window. Go live in the Barrens. So, are you saying that you don't believe the ghouls are people? I mean, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to have a. <laughs> I like uh, it's it's great to hear you laugh, Payday. You know, you're such a what serious else? you're such a serious uh, uh, severe person. It's it's always great to hear you laugh. Well, I, I do enjoy your comedy. I, I, I've heard that some people believe they're people. I've never got it. They, they run around eating brains. That's not a person. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, we've got another call here. Um, someone in the who's who's taking a call in the line. His name is Shiro. Shiro, are you you're on the line or you're, you're on the Dear Handy show? Oh, hello, Handy. Hello. Hello, uh, Shiro. Um, where where are you from, Shiro? Where are you calling from? Uh, I'm currently calling. Well, I'm I'm somewhere somewhere in Iceland. Let's leave it at that. You know, you know how it works. Fair enough. That's a from what I understand, a pretty exotic place to be. A pretty good vacation spot. Uh, if you know the right places, of course you. Yeah, you you know some things we can't talk about. Some things you're not allowed to talk about around here. We all know how that is being in the line of work that we're in. Do you have a question for us, Shiro? I do, I do. Uh, so uh, our line, of, you know, our line of work, it's kind of difficult, you know, it's kind of difficult to do. Uh, I wanted to ask specifically about a specific job, and that is extractions, you know. They tend to go off the rails a lot more than other jobs, and I wanted to ask. I wanted to ask for some tips, you know, how, like how, how to make it a little bit go, go a little bit faster, more streamlined. Yes, extractions can be tricky, and having some good advice on how to pull them off could be a service... For uh, all of our listeners, thank you, Shiro. Um, I'm going to let you go. We're going to answer that off the air. Thank you for calling in. Thank you. Um, so, Payday, extractions. Uh, this is a common job that Shadowrunners get. And, uh, and, you know, some people do it well. Some people don't do it well. But everybody has their own way of doing it. How do you, what, what is your best advice that you can give to people for extractions? Well... I used to do extractions. My best advice when 
your fixer or Mr. Johnson throws an extraction at you, you just stand up, turn around, and walk away. Extractions get complicated. Very complicated. The complications that you do not want end up with your team fragged. Don't do it. Just leave. That's a... Uh... That's, that's fair advice for long-term longevity and everything, but sometimes people are strapped for cash. Sometimes people are, are in a position where they can't turn down. Obviously, you've done well for yourself, Payday, and you're in a situation where you have the luxury to turn down jobs, um, And uh, but not everybody's no. in that situation. No, my fixer uh, gives me crappy jobs. That's basically what my life is now. I moved to Colombia, if I didn't mention that, so... Now that I live in Colombia, I don't get good work. Well, uh, and I and I end up on this show. That's what happens. Well, we're not paying you. I hope that you weren't expecting that. Um, anyway, I always get paid. The oh, uh, so the uh, we, we'll have to deal. I'll have my producers. Can you make sure that that you? Uh, I don't think it's in the budget. Well, you guys handle. You guys, they're going to handle that. Um, Leroy, Leroy, I need you. Well, of course, my people will talk to your people. But anyway, so the advice that I have for an extraction job is, well, so so let's boil it down. What is an extraction at the core of it? You're getting a person out of a bad situation. You're, you're providing a public service um, or, or at least a private service for that person. You're, you're reaching out and helping get a person from one situation, presumably a bad situation, into a better situation. So reasonable people would be able to understand that. I say, you just go right up and you say, hey, listen, this is what we're going to do. And uh, and and I'm hoping that we can see eye to eye on this. And, and a willing inst- extraction target is always a much easier extraction target. So uh, just, just, again, open arms brotherly love let's talk to these people about it um now failing that of course you need to make sure that you're you've got lots of narco jacked and all that kind of stuff but i'm sure you are well versed in extraction uh techniques like that but it's always good to take the uh the the route of just having a conversation having a nice conversation with people well yeah i like that i've got something new shiro right five thousand new yen 5,000 new yen for you to come in and extract handy from my life. <laughs> Always the Joker payday. Uh, you're, you're just a wonderful guest. Uh, we've got another uh, writing question here. Dear Handy, um, I'm HMHVV infected and juggling a job as a stuffer shack worker, yoga instructor, and a wet work specialist. But I'm torn between my three jobs. The stuffer shack I work at is is really poorly staffed and uh and neck and neck in competition with one of the redmond with uh one in the redmond barons without my customer service skills it might fail and i don't want to see leave them in the lurch as a yoga instructor i teach young vampires about our role in the sixth world and provide an example as an original vampire from way back when we were the apex predators but wet work apply wet work supplies me the means oh, this is the next one but wet work supplies me the means to live the life i'm accustomed to since i lost all my investments in the past two matrix crashes where should i prioritize this is a tough one and it's uh, yours uh, the name is Grafen Karina Zweibrücken Bruken Neuberg. That is quite a name, um, but uh, hopefully I pronounced it correctly. Um, so you've got someone who's who's torn between the three uh, the three jobs that they they hold um, that that are useful to them, that are important to them, and quite frankly that they love. So what do you do, Payday? You need to frag and specialize. That's what you need to do. How the hell are you a stuffer shack worker? a yoga instructor, and a wet work specialist. Get get some focus in your fragging life. Just ditch the stuffer shack because, like I said, stupid, unmotivated people work there. Um, I don't know. Ditch the, the wet work. Just take up full-time yoga instruction. That's what I say. That's a... That's a- that's an interesting decision. You know, pick one of them. Sometimes that's what you got to do. You got to make the hard decisions in life, and you've just got to pick one, right? Just and because you're a vampire doesn't mean you have to run around killing people. 
eating yeah. people. You can be a yoga instructor. And that's it. That's what you could do with your life. Just be happy. Yep, yep. Um, so what I would suggest is whenever you're in a situation that that you're stuck between multiple choices that are really difficult to choose from, then maybe the answer is not to choose from any of them at all. And maybe the answer is to just leave all of them behind and choose a different choice altogether. You know what? Vampires are uh, all the rage right now in Hollywood, and I think that you might benefit from heading down to the California Free States and getting yourself into acting, okay? You are quite a person with with uh, some real-life experience that can be used for that method acting, and uh, and maybe you can get some good jobs in some of the local trid shows um, over down there and, 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 and uh, start small, Maybe with some of the daytime television, and then move on to movies. You you probably have being a, having been around a long time and having a long life. You've got a lot of opportunity to move up in a difficult industry like that. Um, quite frankly, it gives you an edge. And I'd say that um, sometimes the best choice is to not make a choice at all. Hey, are vampire beetles a thing? Vampire like vampires, beetles. Yeah. Like like, not like, like not little insects that suck your blood? I mean, I've seen mosquitoes. They're kind of like a vampire beetle. Yeah, that's what I meant. Insects that suck your blood. <laughs> I've seen uh, plenty of crazy insects out there. I've heard of them out in Chicago. You ever been to Chicago, Payday? No. No, I haven't been to Chicago. The bug thing is a myth. All right. It's a, it's a hoax. It's like a, It's like a big thing they want. Everybody to be like, oh, bugs in Chicago again. Come here. It's a great tourist attraction. Yep, yep, yep. You know what? I know that some people believe that, but uh, but uh, I, there's also plenty of people out there that would probably disagree with you heavily. We've got another writing question here that I'm going to take. Um, it says, Dear Handy, I'm a runner who used to work for the Steely Court, or part of it anyways. I got extracted and my direct employer was killed. Long story short, I wound up getting an offer afterwards by a Seattle fixer to be put on retainer. He, uh, his terms are generous, but I have to work with a runner who is indirectly involved in killing my previous employer. That's not the worst part either, Handy. This dwarf captured me and uh, tasered me in the face when I tried to summon a spirit. I should mention I did try to kill him before he and his team captured me. He w has apologized since, but the taser left my face looking like I had a stroke. I like the employment terms, uh, but something in my Judaic heritage makes me want to get all Old Testament on this dwarf. I want to summon a spirit and have it pound him into the pavement like a Mortimer suited tent stake. How do I deal with this? Signed, Simone Weil. Well, I don't even know where to start on that one. For first thing, Simone, don't, don't piss off a dwarf. That's the first thing. This is advice coming straight from a dwarf. I would take him very seriously. I would too. I'm serious about everything. So, next thing. I, I take that opportunity and I would run with it. Honestly, bury the old grudge if money is involved. Your last fixer or, or whoever was obviously a loser. Um, I hated Justice Shields. So just take these opportunities as they come. As long as they're not the Humanus, don't work with the Humanus. Uh, he's a dwarf, though, so I think you're clear. Sometimes, so so that's 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 good advice. But sometimes I think that the uh, best best thing to do when you're dealing with with difficult feelings, uh, you you want to confront a person, is maybe not to do the the typical confrontation. I know I speak often about open arms and brotherly love and communication with each other. But sometimes when you're dealing with a difficult situation like you have, where obviously things have broken down easily before, sometimes you just need to go a more subtle route, like maybe lacing them into forgetting what's happened in the past. Okay? There's all sorts of memory-altering spells as well. Clearly the problem is uh, that you've got history 
that is getting in the way of things. So make sure that history disappears and you can have a clean relationship. Mm, I kind of like that. And if you still have a problem with this guy, whatever, maybe just use the same approach. Like, give him the old swift kick in the nuts from behind and then give him the old forgetting, uh, the, the make you forget cocktail. And then you can, you've got it out. You got your old Testament thing out. He's got aching nuts. He doesn't know how it happened, really. And uh, neither did you. You never saw who did it. Right. Um, I think we've got another call-in question. Um, I think our friend Jim is actually calling back again. Maybe we're going to hear some good news from him about that uh, blood stain. Jim, we've What's got What's wrong you, with this guy? We've got you on the line. <laughs> um, we uh, we want to hear about that blood stain. Did our advice help? Uh, yeah, so luckily for me, I was able to get it all off. And I, I do apologize for calling in so often, but it's like no one else is picking up. Yeah, well, you um, know what? We love talking to our listeners, and we love giving advice that helps. So if if, if that's what we're doing, then uh, by all means. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I know told you guys are definitely helping. Right now, I'm, uh, I'm actually in Tacoma, and I'm trying to find a spot to lay low. Do you guys have any suggestions? Ah, great, great question. We will talk about that, and uh, we'll give you an answer off the air. Thank you for calling in, Jim. Um, spots to lay low around Tacoma. Do you have any uh, familiarity with Tacoma payday? A lot of parking garages in Tacoma. For one, though, first things first, no one told you to wash off the blood. You did that yourself. I told you to put on a jacket. So you're not good at following instructions anyway. But in case, just in case, Jim, just go to a parking lot. A lot of people live down there. You know, just as long as it's a, not one of the those gated communities, go in the parking lot and live out the next month or two. Pay little kids to bring you food. <laughs> you know what? That's not always bad advice. Now, let me say something here. Laying low sometimes mean laying really low. Get yourself into uh, the, uh, the so, some of those ghoul tunnels. Um, nobody likes to go in there. You're going to be able to hide from stuff. There's going to be some ghoul tunnels under the ground. Now, you might not find those in Tacoma. Uh, maybe you have to you have to head over towards the Barrens uh, to get yourself into a situation like that. Um, but uh, save that. You could also try to go through the Orc Underground. Um, sometimes, uh, you know, you've got the, uh, the Scratcha there who like to let people pass through. I, I, I don't know exactly what your meta type is. Maybe they are uh, going to be friendly to a type like yours or maybe not. So you're going to have to take that advice as it comes. But usually, as long as you just uh, play it cool and uh, kind of walk nice and slow and don't be too aggressive, the ghouls in those ghoul tunnels, they're going to leave you alone. You know, it's it's if, if you're not causing them trouble, they're probably not going to cause you trouble. So uh, that's where I would head first and uh, lay low for a little while. Make some friends down there. It can never hurt to have some ghoul friends. What the hell is a ghoul tunnel? They are down there they're like moles? Oh, yeah. You know, ghouls all like to hang out underground because, you know, ghouls. They got nothing else to do. Ghoul yeah. stuff. Yeah, it's not like they do people things. Stupid well, ghouls. we won't open that can of worms again, Payday. But uh, we got another question from Rowan here. He asked, Dear Handy, asking for a friend, a hypothetical situation where my friend may or may not need to take another friend out of the country. This friend, however, is a convict on parole. So my question to you is, what to do? This is kind of almost like a, like a dovetail to our extraction question, don't you think, Payday? Yeah, well, this isn't an extraction. This is smuggling, well, and that's a whole different thing. It's like a coyote work. Isn't that the right word? Right. That is exactly what it's like. So basically what you do is you get in touch with me, me, and I'll get you my credentials after this, and I will get your friend wherever they need to go because it's better work than what I'm doing here. If you can't get me for some reason, like basically you don't have enough money, find some other rigger who will do it for cheap. We go across lines. We know the right routes. Don't try to do it yourself. You're just going to get yourself blown up. And as funny as that would be, your money could have been mine. 
It's a good it's a good point. Again, we're all about employ, helping provide employment opportunities for our fellow Shadowrunners. Um, save that. Maybe you don't have the money for that. Maybe you just need some advice in getting your friend across the border yourself. Well, here, we were just talking about ghouls, right? Well, it happens to be the situation that ghouls in the world, they uh, people like to avoid them. So maybe what you do is uh, you dress yourself up as a ghoul. And ghouls you, again? Yeah, you dress yourself up as a ghoul. You head across the border with your friend. And uh, the authorities see a ghoul. You're like, hey, officer, uh, just a couple of ghouls here trying to get out because that's you guys don't want us here, right? And they're like, okay, yeah, uh, don't come any closer because people just... They don't like ghouls very much for some reason. Um, so they'll let you go through, no problem. Um, I'm sure that'll work. Uh, that's that's what my advice is for you. Mine was way better. Give me a call. Call me. All right, we got another call-in. Uh, not a call-in, but another write-in question here. Dear Handy, I chopped a really big talon off some toxic bug or dragon in Bug City as a trophy. Uh, Payday might not be the best person to answer this. I don't think he really thinks that there's anything like that in Bug City. But anyway, the run paid like Drek, so I'm trying to offload it. Uh, it ought to be a great source of something called reagents. Um, I'm no mojo slinger, so I can't use it, but nobody will buy except toxic mages, and those slaughters don't want to pay for it. They just want to steal it off of me and ha and now they won't leave me alone. The only the only deal I can get is from some damn clown. But the slitch has some chip on his shoulder and he is lowballing me. What do I do with this thing? Signed Whipper. You go first. Well, your local talismonger might be a little bit more likely to take it off of your hands. Uh, maybe go to your local talismonger or someone official. Someone who's got the credentials to maybe take something like that. You don't want to be dealing with this kind of a difficult piece of potential reagent with some person who's likely to give you a raw deal. You know, you're always going to get a fair deal from some, uh, some you know, as technology backed uh, reagent or talismongering uh, a wholesaler. The Draco Foundation. If it really is an insect, piece of insect garbage, go give it to them. See if they'll give you something for it. Uh, it, it beats, um, you know, giving it to some rodeo clown or whatever you, whatever you mean. It's probably not an insect spirit. Like I said, it's been some years since they were really sighted in Chicago. The big bomb fixed all that. There are bog spirits. Don't insult my intelligence. Yep. Well, either one of those will go, I suppose. Um, we've got another. Uh, we've got another uh, question from. Uh, here we go from Oddball Mage. What kind of m m MMGs? Do you guys like, and what kind of attachments do you like with them? What is MMG? Is that medium machine gun? Yes, I think that's right. Yeah, yeah, good work, good work, guy. Following the lingo, I'm supposed to be a big shadow running guy. Hey, uh, I do what I can. Either way, just picked up one. So I ran into a little bit of situation where I let's just. Long story short, I needed to upgrade. I need to, to upgrade my oldest drone, Silverback. Give him a spiritual succession. So I ended up going with the um, with the Stoner Ares. I like the thump that it makes. It's a solid thump. Yeah. Well, uh, I've never actually used a medium machine gun myself, but you know what? Anything that a medium machine gun can pull off, I say um, a stun baton can do better. So, subtle. Well, that's a stupid opinion. 
uh, you know, <laughs> you're quite the jokester. Um, let's uh, let's move on to uh, another question here. Um, actually, we've got. It looks like we've got Jim back on the line. Uh, this guy is. Uh, he must be really liking our advice. Jim, we've got Jim on the line again. Uh, thanks, Jim, for calling into the Dear Handy Show. How can we help you, Jim? Hey, so uh, bad news, bad news, good news, right? Um, forgot to cover the ears, so Org Underground was a terrible idea. Ooh, I'm um, sorry I don't to think hear I'm that. allowed to use Johnny Red Cab anymore, but I did find a tunnel. I think I might be in the Barrens. Uh, question for you How do you handle the smell down here? This is horrible. Oh, right. Okay. Uh, common question. Thank you, Jim. Uh, we'll answer that with you off the air. Um, common question for the Barons in general, and specifically, I get this, uh, I hear people complaining about this a lot with the tunnels underneath the Barons. Um, so, a hygienic piece of advice, house cleaning, so to speak. How do you deal with the smell down there? What about you, Payday? Uh, are you talking about, like, some tunnel smell, or are you talking about just Redmond? I guess that's an. Well, uh, is he gone? He's he's gone. Um, and I'm I'm guessing he's talking about the tunnels. But you know, Redmond's got its own stench as well. So it does. It has. Well, I mean, or so I've heard because I've never actually been to Seattle. But so you say, yeah. Yeah. So. I just say, just deal with it. Plug your nose. Um. If you are in a ghoul tunnel, uh, watch out. Shoot first, ask questions later. I've never met a ghoul who will want to talk to you first. They are usually just trying to eat you. I want to make you one of them. So shoot them. And, and don't let any of these big humanitarians try to tell you they're people, like dwarves. Right. Well, you know what? A lot of times the stench down there in those tunnels underneath the Barrens, uh, ghouls are a real problem, like Payday said. Uh, but I've always found that the problem isn't so much just because the tunnels themselves are reeking, you know, with some un unfixable problem. It's just because, again, people have this stigma about ghouls, so they're afraid to... You ever had that friend who just didn't put on enough deodorant and maybe it just happened over and over because nobody had the uh, nerve or, or, or you know could work themselves up to just tell them hey pal maybe you need to take a shower and that would have fixed the problem so what you need to do get yourself some uh, hygiene products get yourself some cologne uh, get yourself some uh, you know some some things like that some deodorant like I said a little something something well, anything like a like a shower in a can, you know, bring down a crate maybe of shower in a can. Um, you you're obviously someone, Jim, who frequents stuffer shacks. Uh, you um, you were in the bathroom of one at the beginning of our journey here. Uh, so get some of that stuff like that. Bring it down there, and uh, and and help uh, help people out. Be the person who finally tells them what it is that nobody has the has the heart or courage to tell them they're gonna respect you for that you know they're gonna they're gonna say hey this is a uh, thank you they're gonna thank you quite frankly quite, quite frankly I've never thanked anybody who told me that I that I smell well never yeah. now not once well you know but but payday maybe it's because do you feel like you actually do smell do you feel like that they were uh, telling you something that was a service to you, or maybe they were just trying to hurt your feelings? No, and I have this great cologne. I put it on when I go see my drone dealer. She's a lady, so you have to freshen up a little bit. So you give yourself a, a spritz or two. So I understand what you're saying. Sometimes you just have to make a good impression. Right. And what is this? I've got, like, all of this, like, 10,000 hours of, like, insect spirit crap on my comm link. Well... You know, I don't uh, I don't know what to tell you about that. But um, here's what we're gonna do. Uh, we're gonna take a short break. We're gonna we've got some music for you from uh, from uh, Opti sings the hits. We'll come back and take another call in just a minute and answer some more questions. So, all right, that was uh, that was Opti sings the hits. Mr. Johnson, uh, one of my favorite Opti songs, and um, uh, you know, I can't get enough of that guy. Payday, what do you think about it? I met. This guy Opti the other day. I, you know what? I when I was running with him, I, I I swore I I knew him from somewhere, and it clicked at the end of the run, and I I made this like wish, 
wished into the shadows. I said, please, ghost, please make it so that I never hear that man's voice again. And thank you for ruining that just a couple days afterwards. Thanks. <laughs> I just can't get enough of you, Payday. You are such a you're such a hilarious guy. Um, we got a quick question before we take a call uh, from our good friend uh, Salimus, um, who says um, on the line we've got a caller, Salimus. But uh, in, just before that, I've got a quick question from uh, Rowan. Asks, hey, dear Handy, uh, hey. Totally not related to my last question, but may or may not have cut a deal with a dragon. Please advise. You know what? Here's what I'm going to tell you. Um, in my experience, uh, dragons, they're, they're old creatures. They've been around for a while. They've got the wisdom and perspective to not really, to be able to look above the, the, the muck that we, uh, that we really get ourselves into. Uh, mired in down here as mere, mere silly mortals, right? So they usually are uh, quite forgiving. So um, if you've got yourself in a difficult deal, I suggest confronting the dragon and saying, sir uh, or madam, uh, please, uh, you know, explain your situation. Maybe you weren't quite fully informed, and uh, and they're they're probably willing to uh, to let you off the hook. I, again, they've got the perspective, the uh, the the wisdom. Of age, Payday. You know what I'm talking about with that, right? I have no idea. I'm. I have no idea what you're even saying. All of my stuff is filling up with stuff about insect spirits. My my com link, my bloody cyber deck, my external storage. It's all insect spirit stuff. Some guy named some idiot named Bull. Um, some other guy. Bull. Abstruse. Bull, uh, I think uh, I've heard of the guy. Um, you know, there's a lot of people around who are probably concerned with your uh, your insect spirit denial. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of uh, uh, insect deniers out there, and um, quite frankly, it's a problem. And, uh, Bull. And Bull Drek is what I say. Bull Drek. Ske skepticism has its place, Payday. Uh, I, I can certainly appreciate that, but sometimes the evidence is overwhelming. You know, and I think that's what people are trying to say. Let's move on to uh, taking a, f a call here. Um, Salimus, Salimus, you're on the uh, Dear Handy show. Uh, how's it going? Where are you calling from, Salimus? I'm calling from the free state of California right now. Excellent. We just suggested that somebody head down there, a, a vampire friend who uh, just sent us some in information who, who might be trying to get a job down there. Maybe you should. Uh, maybe they should hook up with you and maybe you can help them out. Well, that kind of relates uh, to my question. Uh, Excellent. I ran into a situation. I ran into a situation recently where I was just, you know, trying to make a bit more new and trying to make ends meet, and you know, the face bragged up the negotiations. And so I was just wondering, do you have any advice on looting, like you know, grabbing a bit of extra new on the side of a job? Ah, uh, good question. This is this is a common thing that uh, Shadowrunners deal with. Thanks for calling in, Salimus. We'll go ahead and answer your question off the air. I appreciate you calling. I've got mixed um, Go, go got ahead, mixed Payday. Feelings. You got mixed feelings mixed, about looting? I do. So This is a, this in, is certainly a contentious topic among Shadowrunners, and I'd love to hear your opinion. Yeah, back when I when I just returned to Columbia, we had a little run where we where we iced this crazy troll. And he had mm -hmm. a he had a hammer, and it was apparently this big magical mumbo jumbo hammer. Yeah. It was a big point of contention. With with me and my uh, with me and my fellow runners, if we should just keep it because it wasn't explicitly mentioned, uh, or we should give it to the fixer and maybe try to get a bonus. I was on the firmly on the side of fencing this bloody thing. Now, arguments, arguments is all it causes. Just don't try to loot extras. It just complicates things among you and your partners. Sure, sure. I that love money. That is one way to go, but you know what? Um, there's a way you can go that'll keep you out of trouble, and uh, also uh, maybe potentially um, in a in a more legitimate uh, way help you out. So, so you know, there's the old the old adage, the old uh, scenario where you you're walking down the street, you find like an envelope full of money, and uh, what do you do? Do you pick it up? Do you keep it, or do you turn it into the authorities? And the the wisdom is 
you take it to the police station, you turn it into the authorities, and if nobody claims it after a certain amount of time, then it's yours, right? Well, that's what you do with this looted, inf looted stuff. Nobody has to know exactly uh, where it came from or how you found it. You don't give that information, um, at least not in the way that would incriminate you. What you do is you say, well, I found this stuff, and I'm concerned that it needs to get to the right person. So you take it down to the night errand office or the Lone Star office, whatever is your local law enforcement. You take it down there, you turn it in, and you say, hey, I want to be a good citizen, and this is what I've got. It kind of gets you off the hook with law enforcement, right? Kind of also gives you a sort of an alibi-ish kind of a thing to, to protect you in the future uh, when it comes to this job that you might have found this thing for. You let it go there. Nobody claims it. Probably they're not going to claim it, right? Because of the circumstances around which you found it. Well, nobody claims it, and it ends up being yours anyway. And uh, nobody's going to say anything because of it. So it's kind of the way I would go. Why would you walk into Lone Star or KE or whoever's headquarters? Why would you just go there? Well, sometimes, well, there's a lot of reasons, Payday. Sometimes you want to get an education in decking, right? We talked about that earlier. There's a lot of reasons to walk into one. An education in decking. How do you get an education in decking? By basically walking into the den, the lot walking just right into the alligator's mouth. Well, you know what? One thing that we'll do, I'll get my producers to provide you a copy of the audio of the show that we're doing right now, and you can listen back to that question that we did. We're going to move on right now. We got a question who, that came in from, uh, it says, Hey, uh, dear Handy, uh, what the hell's that fragger payday have against us ghouls? And follow-up question, what's his primary diet? Uh, Jason. Is he trying to pretend that he was a ghoul? Ghouls can't read and write. <laughs> oh, that's a that's a, maybe a little bit of an off-color joke, but uh, Payday, you know, I appreciate your risque humor. Um, so I, 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 I'm going to answer. I'm going to might be speaking out of turn here, Payday, but I'm going to go ahead and say I don't think Payday really has anything against ghouls. Um, he's he's a funny guy. Sometimes people take some some risky chances with their humor, and uh, in my experience so far, Payday, uh, he, he's he's just trying to be a funny guy. Yeah, that's me. Hilarious. Um, no, I don't really have anything against ghouls. I mean, like some people do keep things like devil rats around their their place. We we just talked to somebody who had a devil rat. Why aren't they doing like mail order ghouls? Like watchdog ghouls. Mail order ghouls. You mean like kind of like that service where you would get the uh, like uh, maybe the same people who sell the devil rats? Is that what you're talking yeah, about? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Exactly what I'm talking about. And for that, why why not like mail order vampires? Mail order vampires. You know, there's there's a there's there's some maybe some wisdom in that. You know, you need someone to watch your back at night. Vampires love the night. Right. That's. Now you now you get the way I'm thinking. You know, congratulations. I, I have now elevated your intelligence just because you were hanging out with me. Well, you know, uh, I tr I try to take it as they come. I try to take it as 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 I can get it. Uh, we got another thing here. Dear Handy and Payday, uh, must be somebody listening in again because they know you're here with us. Payday, Dear Handy and Payday, this one's for Payday. Well, uh, way to be misleading there. You said Dear Handy and Payday, and then you said... Anyway, this one's for Payday. There's been some rumors in the shadows. How does it feel to be half of one of the first confirmed Intermatrix couples? With this uh, Eon, I think? Uh, you might know who's talking about. The Shadow Nets want to know. Signed, Relative Curiosity. What do you mean? I think, he's Look, saying, I think he's saying uh, that you there's this person, Eon, I guess, that you have a relationship with. Look, for the last bragging time, I want to be on record. She's not my fragging girlfriend. All right. Or I, my daughter. I, I didn't hear anybody mention anything about a girlfriend, but uh, maybe this is a this is a touchy subject for you, I take it. Well, they said, like, the first confirmed something or something. I don't know. I don't know. Here's another question. Dear Handy, uh, I'm a rigger who specializes in smuggling and coyote work. Recently, my employer got a crime wing, which I occasionally get to use. It's a wonderful machine, big enough to fit a dozen fully combat-loaded trolls. I know 
because I've run a dozen fully combat loaded trolls in it. The idea of owning one myself makes me, uh, let's just say, euphoric. How can I get one of my own? It's not just the new yen which I don't have enough of, it's their limited distribution and sales. Signed, Jenna Jets. What do you think? And obviously this is a hard to come by piece of equipment. How do you suggest somebody get something like this crime wing, but uh, or, or any really uh, hard to come by piece of equipment? Well, there's the, you know, I could try to be funny and try to be irreverent and waste your damn time. But quite frankly, you steal it. It's a run in itself. Um, as one professional to, I guess, another, because not just anybody wants that kind of kind of gear. Make a hit out on it. If you don't have the talent with you, bring talent in. Steal the fragging thing. Make sure that nobody can trace it. Make sure no one can trace you. Make sure it's perfect. The job is perfect. Come away with it the right way. Never, ever buy expensive equipment. Worst case scenario. Absolute worst case scenario. And if you are like cream of the crop, make a deal with your fixer or your Johnson. Say, I won't take pay for this. Just give me something incredible that I can't normally get. That's what you do. Well, you know, that's some, that's some decent advice. Um, I don't know that I can top that. That's pretty good. And besides, we've got an urgent call from our good friend uh, Jim, who's on the line. Jim is calling back again. Uh, Jim, how can we help Not you? You're on the again. Dear Handy show. All right, so I almost did have something for Payday with his uh, mail order ghoul thing. Um, met a really nice ghoul. His name was Steve. Oh, so you did? So you, so you went down? Um, you took our advice with the uh, the shower in a can kind of stuff. Yeah, so uh, that's that's actually what I was calling about. That that didn't really work. I don't know if it's just the uh, the Stuffer Shack brand. Maybe they would have preferred the S Mart or the Kong Walmart. Um, things are pretty bad. I'm uh I'm I'm headed over towards Tacoma. I need to know if you guys have a good street dock in the area. Anyone? All right, uh, Jim, we're gonna try to help you out. I'm gonna see what uh, Payday knows about the area, and I'll give you some advice as well um thanks jim sounds like things didn't go over too well for jim uh with the you know there might be something to the kong walmart thing or the s mart uh the idea that he has you know everybody likes a different scent everybody likes anything uh you know may maybe we don't know exactly how he proposed this hygiene um enhancement uh so maybe things just didn't go over well that way you know some people aren't uh uh, what about what, you? Seem to be at least uh, passingly uh, somehow familiar, yet not familiar with Seattle. Do you know of any uh, street docks? Um, or, no, uh, never been there. Sorry. Well, uh, but I do have a little bit of advice, Jim, because you know I want to make sure that you can continuously call and annoy me. I want you to basically find some bubble wrap and just wrap the bubble wrap around it and some tape. And just hope for the best. Hope that you don't bleed out all over the street. I'm hoping that you're just... You're calling because you're direly wounded. And just... If you if you, if the blood is coming through the bubble wrap, don't worry about it. It's just weakness leaving your body. That's an excellent point. Um, I'm always a big fan of, uh, of trying to solve problems on your own. You know, like DIY sort of solutions right and uh home remedies and uh and folk medication or folk remedies th th that's often that's just diy healthcare don't you think so um do so it yourself do it yourself healthcare yeah yeah you know what jim seems like a very competent person that could never screw anything up so just take my advice and look after yourself don't bring doctors into it doctors complicates things give you weird prescriptions yeah even Don't street docs them. street docs can sometimes especially when it comes to this ghoul stuff because it sounds like you might have gotten in a little tussle with a ghoul um so uh people get a little funny about the ghoul stuff um so you got you you want to make sure before you go to a street doc or any doctor altogether you make sure you do that research but if you're in a pinch right now i would go with a payday's advice with the bubble wrap some duct tape maybe throw some like uh uh you know some some 
sage on it and uh, grab some. Go go to your uh, the, the S Mart or the Kong Walmart, like you said. Hit up that uh, hit up the produce section. Uh, really, any old piece of produce, if natural things rubbed into the arm, they can usually cause uh, some healing effects. So that's just, my suggestion. Rub some Redmond dirt on it. There you go. Um, this uh, we got another question. Handy and payday. Uh, coming in from us says, so I was out at the club and talking with this chick who is totally into me, you know, when this slimy dandelion eater, wa- I don't know, are we allowed to say that? Are we, are we allowed to say that on the air? I don't know. Maybe they'll have to bleep it afterwards. Um, yeah, says, that's just, that's just racist. You can't say things like that. We'll say, uh, an elf wanders by and says two words to her and casts some spell on her. She throws up a drink in my face and goes to leave with him. So I pulled my thunderbolt and put a trio of rounds between his pointy ears. Uh, how do you deal with those? Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna take some censorship liberties here. How do you deal with those fine fellows who are elves using that creepy mojo to steal all the chicks? Signed, Shadow Ron. You ever Shadow been in, Ron. You ever been in a situation like this before, Payday, where you're you're just being outclassed by some people at the club? No, women are usually all over me at the club. I can't, I can't deal with it sometimes. Last time I was at a club, all my friends were there, and these women just all over the place. Hey, Payday, you want to go home with me? You want to start a relationship? I was like, no, I'm just over. My, my wife, my wife died recently. I'm not ready for a new relationship. But they don't, they can't take no for an answer, and then they slip tracking devices on you so that they can find you at a later time. Yeah. You know, I sometimes have that occasional problem as well, but believe it or not, sometimes I do run into the problem at the clubs where where women find someone else far more attractive than I do even after I start making, you know, making my moves. Um, so uh, I, I know it might be hard to believe, uh, but, but, you know. I can't believe anyone would ever reject you. Uh, exactly. Well, t- it happens. <laughs> it happens to the best of us, Payday. Um, but uh, what I like to do, I always like to have an ace up my sleeve, and that ace is magic. Now, I'm not talking about the kind that you're describing, Shadow Ron. I'm talking about actual sleight of hand street magic. Women love chicks. And I don't want to be uh, gender, sp- you know, like any kind of relationship that you're in. People in general like magic tricks. So you do a little routine, you know, pick a card, any card kind of thing, pull a quarter out from behind their ears or a cred stick, have, you know, whatever it is. You know, you do a little trick like that. People are, you got to get that charisma working. And that usually gives me an upper hand. Um, well, I mean, I, I at least like to think it does. I'm still waiting for that to work, um, but I'm working on my routine, routine. You know, it's a recent development. Do, do these ladies know that your name is Shadow Ron? Because that's a that's a wicked handle. So what you do is you just go up to the bar when they're there. You just slide up next to them and be like, Hey, hey baby. I'm Shadow Ron. Yeah, you see if that try that, see if that works. You won't have to worry about any elves stealing your girl. Alright. Um, yeah, either one of those situations, uh, th- I think will be, uh, will, will work for you. Just give it a try. Uh, I think, <laughs> believe it or not, guess who we have on the call payday. We've got our good friend, Jim is back. Uh, Jim, were you able to take our advice and, uh, handle, uh, the situation, you know, DIY healthcare style? Uh, yeah. So, um, uh, I do have some bandages on it. Uh, bubble wrap is a good idea. Um, unfortunately, uh, walking into an S Mart completely covered in blood and smells, um, kind of put a couple people on edge. So now I'm actually on the roof of the S Mart. Oh, okay. And yeah. I think I hear sirens. Um, oh. Anyone have a VTOL in the area? I, I, I could really use some help getting home. Well, uh, Jim, uh, you sound like I can hear the sirens back there. You sound like um, you might be in a. I'm going to let you go in case things come up but you know i wouldn't uh i wouldn't jump to conclusions uh right payday like uh the sirens might not be for you um so you want to make sure that you uh you just hang out uh keep a good eye on the sirens because if if they are coming for you you're going to want to make sure that you are compliant and cooperative you haven't done anything wrong 
um, you're just handling some DIY healthcare, is from my understanding of things. Um, how you ended up on the roof? Well, you know, I'm sure you've got your good, legitimate reasons, and you can explain that to the authorities if they arrive, but they could just be going to handle some other pursuit. Jim, it's so great. I'm so happy to hear that you're still alive. Um, so my advice is to just hang drop from the roof that's how you do it you hang drop from the roof as long as you're about uh 10 or 12 stories up it should be fine so just lower yourself down as far as you can and just let go just i just hit the ground running hit the ground running <laughs> and quite literally yeah yeah exactly so just you'll be fine as long as when you hit the ground you just start running right away yeah, I uh, I couldn't agree more, you know. So um, let's see, uh, we've got another call from, uh, it looks like a Tonic. Uh, we're going to pull Tonic in here. Tonic, you're on the Deer Handy Show. How, uh, where, where are you calling from? Tonic? Tonic, are you there? Well, we're gonna pull Tonic back out into the call waiting room, and maybe we'll pull back in. Make sure you're you're uh, you're on off of mute or anything like that, and and we'll try again in just a few minutes. Tonic, are you there? Uh, are you able to hear us on the Dear Handy show? All right. Well, we'll answer another question here first. Uh, so, Dear Handy, um, I know I've been writing in a lot. Uh, this is our friend Rawan. I know I've been writing it a lot handy, but I do need some experience. This thing that I may or may not have needed to smuggle my friend out of the country for and may or may not have cut a deal with a dragon to retrieve uh, may or may not be within a black site belonging to Aztec Technology. The thing is about the size of a half of a shipping container and I need to leave with it and return it. And since Payday is a rigger, this sounds right up his alley. What? Should he do payday? <laughs> All right. Well, this seems like a real pro job. So I, I guess it all depends on what kind of it's all about gear, isn't it, Andy? You, you got to come into it with the right gear, the right vehicles, the right, the right thing to get the job done. So if you're not if you don't got a helicopter that can lift this thing out of here. You're wasting your time. Call me when you have a helicopter. Obviously, if you had one, you wouldn't be wasting my time and, and placing this call. And, and Handy's time. Don't waste Handy's time. <laughs> I appreciate your concern, Payday, but uh, it's it's really not a waste of my time. Here's what I suggest. You gotta ship something, and it's that size. You need to call your friendly FedEx AZ services, okay? Uh, you, you said it has to do with Az Technology? Well, I'm sure that they've already got a uh, hand in there. Uh, FedEx and uh, Az Technology, they've, they've got a little uh, relationship there, so they could probably get in quick, get it out. It's going to cost you maybe a little bit of a pretty penny, but uh, your dragon friend should be able to help with that. Usually they've got some strings that they're able to pull, and like uh, like we've been suggesting before, you just got to be up front with them. They're reasonable, reasonable reasonable creatures they are since when you ever met a dragon let's take another caller it looks like jim needs some help again jim um jim we've got you on the line we uh we're hoping that uh the sirens have passed how's it going jim you're on the deer handy show everything is amazing so i took your advice i jumped off the Ooh. roof i landed <laughs> on a guy I checked him for medication and bandages. I found some pills, and everything is phenomenal. That's like, exactly what we want to hear. Is phenomenal. Good lord. Um. Right. So Johnny Red Cab won't take me, and uh, like I said, no one, no one's picking up their phone. Um. Do you guys, do you guys have a listener or you know someone who can come, come pick me up? I, I, I think it's about time for me to get home. Yeah, well, you know what? Let's let's see if we can deal with that. It sounds like you've gotten your situation under control. Maybe that person that you were able to jump on and uh, you got some medication and bandages, they must have just had exactly what you were looking for. 
what do you think, Payday? How do you, just person's just trying to find a ride home. Nobody seems to want to take him. Probably, you know, uh, you've got blood on your clothes. They're just concerned about upholstery and stuff like that. Have you tried getting a, you, you're, you're presumably right there by a, an S-Mart. Have you tried grabbing what? some, uh, like, uh, trash bags? Uh, maybe those will help. No, no, no. Just stop. Stop what you are doing. Look around. I'm sure that this guy that you fell on, probably about 20 feet away from him, there's probably a, a vehicle with its door open right now that he may have just gotten out of. Obviously, he doesn't need it anymore. Just get in there. Don't worry. I'm sure there's no trackers on it. I'm sure that nobody really owns it. Um, they, they just He left it with the door open. Obviously, it's free game for anybody. Just get in that sucker and drive away. That's a really good point. Often vehicles are left uh, just just people. Uh, it's 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 a hard economy. It's difficult to sell your car nowadays, and some people are just ready to get rid of it. You can't just leave a car cluttering up your driveway, out in the street in front of your apartment. You know things. Uh, the authorities don't like that kind of thing. Your homeowners association, your HOA, might not like it sitting in your lawn, and you got to find a way to get rid of it. Um, so some people yeah. just leave the cars out there. And and, and the sirens are just I, trust me, they're an added bonus. Exactly. Keep them on. Yeah. Yeah, it helps you get from place to place. You're trying to get home quickly, right? Well, turn those sirens on. People uh, tend to get out of the way of sirens. I'm not exactly sure why, uh, but in my experience, that's what happens. I mean, I even try to get out of the way of sirens. I don't know. Um, it seems like the right thing to do. That's what everybody else is doing. So uh, it's just it'll probably help you get home a little bit quicker. Um, also, just if tell you happen- everybody you're in an emergency. Yes. Also, if you happen to be in that car and you hear some uh, voices over the the radio in the car, don't worry about it. I'm, I've I've heard of uh, some of these cars that get left behind. Um, they've got these like special um, uh, personas that are loaded into the vehicle themselves that kind of like give you that experience of being in you know like a, having a CB radio from the old days or or even having communication from like the authorities or something like that it's it's just a fun experience um, that, that people are doing nowadays yeah emergency emergencies smir- Jim you're more important than anybody you may yeah so um, we got a question from uh, looks like uh, tonic was having difficulty with her matrix connection but uh, she sent us in a text uh, text uh, chat uh, question here says frag and technomancers fine we'll go text instead handy and payday well I guess this is for payday uh, handy seems like quite the diplomat anyway interpersonal conflict on a team how do you deal with it see uh, we had this run had to get a whiz prototype deck return it to this uh banging hot of a hottie of elf, elf of a lady uh right well before we finish the run the fragging technomancer gets a call from his ugly orc chick he's got the hots for and she wants this nova hot tech too so there we are in the middle of the run and i'm thinking i'm gonna have to frag a guy on my own team we finished the run I kept him from getting it and took the deck to the elf chick. Now the fragger's acting like a like a sulky and moody, and uh, I mean, worse that worse than normal tech, worse than normal technomancer moody. Payday, you seem like a guy who has a lot of interpersonal issues. What is your advice? How do I get this guy to stop acting to stop acting like a fragger and more like a chummer? Well, you fragged up. You should have been a wingman. You know, he's obviously likes this orc, orc girl. Oh, I've been with some crazy orc women, I tell you that. You should have been on his side from the start. So you screwed up. So what do you do now? Well, I don't know what you do. You, you are the problem here. I'm completely on his side. Andy, what do you, what do you think? Well... Um, sometimes, uh, sometimes the best way to handle a situation is through, uh, lying about it. Um, you know, sometimes you, you just need to sugarcoat things a little bit and, uh, and make that pill go down a little bit nicer. A spoonful of medicine, uh, is, helps go down with some sugar. That's how that saying goes, right? Um, so I say you come up with a story. You come up with something, uh, maybe embellish something about yourself that makes you appear more appealing. Because uh, Payday, like you said, uh, it seems like you might be the problem. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's what it seems to me. You are the problem. Just take that forward as you go into life. Just always keep it in mind that you are the problem. All right. Uh, sure, it won't do anything for your confidence. <laughs> We've got another question here. Uh, Dear Handy, uh, looks like uh, my fiance and I had uh, cushy gigs doing magic R&D at a major megacorp when we graduated from MIT and T. However, she died in a lab accident and I went crazy for a few years. During that time, I found a fire elemental as an ally spirit and unconsciously made her look like my dead fiance. I've since set her free and now she says she wants to start a relationship with me. Is that weird? And what should I do? Thanks, Chaos, uh, Chaos owner of Chaotic World Talismonger Shop. This sounds like, uh, I I'm not really sure what the problem is here. Sounds like a match I know made what the in problem heaven. Is. Nerds that make girlfriends for themselves. This is a problem. This is like an epidemic. I wonder if he's in Seattle. I hear that sometimes losers in Seattle make girlfriends for themselves. Look, the fire spirit is just, it's bound to you. It's doing what you know, it thinks that it needs to do to please you to get away from you ultimately. It's basically hoping that one day you die and that it will be without you. Right. Well, and so if what you want to do is you want to try to mitigate this circumstance happening if it is in fact going to happen. Now, what I will warn you is if that's going to happen, they're probably going to try to tempt you into, say, the meta planes. It might be like, oh, hey, let's get married. Right, and uh, I want to have a marriage. I, I need it, you know. My the the spirit might be saying, you know, oh, I want my parents to go to the wedding, but they have to have it in, you know, their kind of a, you know, strict religious circumstances. So they're gonna want to have it done in their church. So you're gonna want to come over here to the meta planes because they can't do it. You know, the the meta plane of fire, and uh, that's that's bad news. All right, you don't want to do that. First, try to convince her to have a, uh, you know, maybe a lope instead. Um, if, uh, if that doesn't work, then what you're going to want to do is, uh, you're going to want to get out, get out of that situation as quickly as possible. Um, Payday, do you have any advice for getting out of that situation as quickly as possible? Yes, actually, I, the, the perfect advice has just come to me. You know what? Who am I to tell you? Who am I to get in the way of love? So just embrace it. Make sure you don't have any fire retardant clothing at all uh, nothing that will stop burns because that's just refusing it sends to let the wrong love message in. right right it does so just embrace it with both hands right right now like right now uh, you see what i was saying earlier payday you are a romantic at heart um i think we've got a uh, time for another call uh, <laughs> you will not believe who's calling back I think we might have some good news, hopefully, uh, from our Trouble friend good. Jim. Jim is here. Uh, you're back on the Handy Show. Dear Handy, Jim, uh, what's, what's the update? Were you able to find a ride home? I was. I was. I do greatly, greatly, greatly appreciate all the advice you have given me. Um, so it turns out I, just, uh, I, I commandeered some sort of night errant car, I think. Um, oh, that was the one I guys. thought. Yeah, uh, driving home. The sirens are really cool. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. I found a place to park this in the alley behind my flat. So I, I think I'm going to go lay down between all the excitement and uh, the massive blood loss. And I'm not sure exactly what I'm on, but I'm definitely on something. So I, I, I just wanted to... Wanted to, uh, I just, I, I just wanted to thank you for everything that you guys have done tonight. Well, I'm so glad that we were able to help you, Jim. And um, I'm, I'm sure just uh, whatever you want to do is uh, sometimes the sirens in those kind of uh, custom sort of, uh, um, um, you know, like like vehicles that have the the uh, the package persona packages inside of them. Sometimes they, I've, I understand that they have some tricky buggy issues where they'll go off in the middle of the night. You don't want that to be in your garage or anything. Uh, because oh, no, no, no. It's in an alley. It's in an alley. Yeah. It's good. It's good. Everything's Great. good. Everything's fine. Great. Perfect. Looks like you've uh, thought of everything, Jim. Thanks so much I'm, for calling in, and I'm glad that we were able to help. I'm blown away. I honestly don't know how you're, you know, how you're still alive, but you're doing it, Jim. So I have a little parting advice, just a little final advice, especially if you're feeling woozy from the blood loss. When you're laying down on your couch or your bed, um, it is important to let your wounds breathe 
Just mm -hmm, take mm -hmm. off that bubble wrap, just open the wounds up, and just lay there until you fall asleep. Yeah, yeah. The medication that you're on uh, will probably help with that. Remember what Payday was talking about earlier about getting some of that uh, that uh, vi vital toxins out of your body? The medication is probably going to help with that. Might even thin the blood a little bit and uh, help that um, um, come on out nice and and quickly. So uh, um, I'm not a doctor, so uh, don't take my advice to be uh, to be you know like formal medical advice. I don't wanna exactly want to deal with the legal issues, but uh, I I am friends with a doctor. Who has who has told me uh, similar things before? Um, I think we've I, got. I, I fix drones. I'm basically a, doc, a doctor, right? Basically. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, we got time for one more question here that is uh, written in from us. Uh, looks like says, "Dear Handy, my boyfriend has always had a thing for Maria Mercurial. Who doesn't? Am I right, Payday? Uh, Maria Mercurial, right. the Silver I, Lady." Yes, I never got the Silver Lady, but it's always been a thing for him. In the past few months, he's been slowly changing his appearance to resemble hers. First with clothing, then with singing lessons, and recently with surgery. I recently found out he's hired a shadowrunning team to kidnap Maria, dispose of her, and insert him into her place. How do you stop this, and how do I get my boyfriend back? Signed, Bruce. Oh, I was with you until you, you started talking about actually, you know, replacing the actual silver lady. I was good with it until that point. That's where you got to draw the line. I mean, you could have made money on him singing, especially if he could sing like her. Because yeah. she has a hell of a, a hell of a voice in my right handy. Uh, she certainly does. And if your uh, boyfriend there... Uh, has a similar voice then well i i honestly don't see the problem with a uh, switching because if 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 the public can't tell then the public can't tell payday what different does no, it no what? no no okay I, I i hear what you're saying you strongly disagree with me but uh you know what i'm saying is if the public if you can't tell the difference if uh if uh bruce here hadn't written us in you would never know so uh I'm gonna say, uh, you know, maybe you'd be happier with uh, with Maria Mercurial in, herself in your life, anyway. Sounds like Bruce. There's no, re there's no replacing the Silver Ladies. People have tried. You can't do it. Not Bruce. Not Vendetta Violent. Not all of these up and coming rock stars. No one can replace the Silver Lady. Well. Uh, I think that's all the time that we've got for questions, Payday. Um, I'm so glad that you were able to join us on the Dear Handy Show. Just, you know, Shadowrunners like I, ourselves, providing a public service to Shadowrunners, advice from Shadowrunners to Shadowrunners. Um, you know, I love doing it, and I'm, I loved having you on the show. Yeah, well, I, I hated being here, so, uh, yeah, it's been, uh, it's been terrible. Uh, well, there's some of that uh, wry witch you got there, Payday, again. Um, well, um, we're going to say goodbye. Uh, I've got my producer in the booth telling me we've got to go. Apparently, uh, there's a there's a problem with uh, Kit, who has been uh, dealing with... Uh, so, oh, there I go with her name again. Um, I think uh, we're having a little bit of a, a maybe an issue with that uh, that we're going to have to deal with off the air. I hope she finds you. I hope she finds you and makes you pay. Well... It was good talking to you, Payday, and goodbye! Oh, that was supposed to...